Thank you, Ed. Um, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce this beautiful young lady today, <laughs> Alexandra. She goes by Alex Sorahan. Um, Alex is a student at Berry College. She's an upcoming junior, and she's uh, majoring in biochemistry uh, and pre-veterinary medicine. She's from Rutledge, Georgia, which is out in Morgan County. And um, after a devastating <clears throat> event in her life, the loss of her brother, she's been working hard to educate people, especially teens, uh, on the dangers of texting and driving. Um, she's spoken to colleges and high schools all around Georgia and, uh, and highway safety conferences uh, nationwide. And uh, as Ed said, this is an issue that's very dear to the hearts of the district governor and, and Rotary for this year. Um, in high school, she received a grant from the governor's office of highway safety to organize a group to travel around to high schools and colleges and talk about the dangers of texting and driving. Um, she's been heavily involved in legislation uh, in 2010. I was hoping Matt would be here today to maybe say a few words. He was actually the uh, representative that introduced the bill in 2010 to prohibit uh, uh, texting and driving. And, but he was in court today and wasn't able to make it. Um, but now she's going forward on new legislation, hopefully, to push for legislation that prohibits the use of handheld devices while driving. Um, she, interestingly here, she received a, rot ter a Rotary scholarship to attend college at Barry, so from the Rotary Club of Madison, Georgia. So she's not a stranger to Rotary Clubs, uh, nor is her mother, Mandy, who's here with her today. And so let's give a warm welcome to Alex Sorhan. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about something that's near and dear to my heart and the community that I live in. And hopefully, after I speak to you guys, it will be near and dear to your heart as well and something that you guys take very seriously from here on out for the rest of your lives. So um, first, I'm going to start off with a couple of videos. Um, and so we'll just watch these. Oh, let's see if I can get it to play. OK. So this is a man who was texting while he was walking. He ran into a flower pot. Okay, here's the next video of someone else who's texting while they're walking. <laughs> okay, and then the next video of someone texting while they're walking in the mall. <laughs> okay, so these are all really funny videos of people who are texting while they're walking. And to me, this shows that if you're texting while you're walking, you can't be doing two things at one time. Although we think that we can text while we're doing other things, we really can't. But the reality behind these videos is that although these people are texting while they're walking and they're running into flower pots and fountains and things like that, the reality behind it is that if they were texting while they were driving, they wouldn't be running into flower pots. They wouldn't be running into garage doors. They would be running into other people on the road, trees, guardrails, things like that. So the reality behind all of this is, um, in, a, in a kind of safe way, we can see that when we're texting, we can't be doing other things at the same time. So that translates over to texting while driving. We can't text while we walk, so why would we think that we can text while we're driving? So. Um, as Mr. Doug said, I'm here talking to you because of my brother Caleb. Now, my brother Caleb is two and a half years older than me, and I have two brothers. I have one who's two and a half years older and one who's two and a half years younger, and I'm right in the middle of these boys. So growing up, we were really close because we're pretty close in age to each other. Um, and my parents also always told us that no matter what happens in life, um, there's a couple of people that you can always depend on. You know, you have your friends, but they might turn their back on you. And your parents are always there for you, but at some point, they're not going to be there to support you anymore. But the people who you can always depend on for your whole entire life will be your siblings. They're the people who will always be there for you no matter what. And so me and my brothers took that seriously. We took that to heart. And we depended on each other, and we used each other when we needed each other, and we were always there for each other when we needed each other. And so... My older brother, Caleb, was especially great at this, and he was always there for me and my younger brother. But it was funny because even though he was the oldest child, 
he also asked us for advice. He asked us to be there for him as well. And so that just shows the kind of relationship that we had. But not only was my older brother there for, us, for the siblings, he was also there for the rest of the family. Now my family, um, me and my siblings are the oldest in my family out of the cousins. We only have younger cousins who are probably, you know, at least 10 years younger than us, most of them. And so, you know, they look up to us. They see us and they want us to be there with them. And sometimes when you're a teenager, it's not as fun to go play with your younger siblings. But Caleb, even when he was in college, made it important to him to come back and play with his younger cousins, even though they were so much younger, because he knew it would make their day. And not only was my brother there for our family, he was also there for everyone in his life. He was the kind of person who wanted you to know that no matter what, you have someone to go to. You should never feel alone because there's always someone there who can make you smile and brighten your day. And he was always that person. He always had the biggest grin on his face, and you can see it in that picture right there. That was Caleb's big grin that he always had all the time. He was always happy, and he took things so lightly. Um, and he, he loved football, and he loved baseball, and he wasn't the best player at either of those sports, but he devoted his life to knowing about them and trying to be a part of those teams in high school, and that was really important to him. So, like I said, my brother was two and a half years older than me, and he graduated um, high school in 2009, um, and he went to North Georgia College to um, major in athletic training so that he could be an athletic trainer and be involved in football and baseball for the rest of his life. So he was at North Georgia College, and he had just finished up his first semester of school there, and he was back um, at home with us for his Christmas break. And he decided to go to Athens, which is a short drive from where we live, to meet a friend to do some Christmas shopping for the family. And while he was driving there, he decided to text while he was driving. And because of that decision, he swerved into the other lane, hit another car head on, and the crash killed him instantly. My brother's life was gone in one instant because he looked down at his phone. One instant took his entire life away. He, all he ever knew was going to school. He never got to have a career. He never got to have a wife or children. He never got to grow up. All he ever knew was going to high school. And not only what he lost when he lost his life, but what my family lost. Every day, me and my family have to wake up and know that we're never going to see my brother again. My brother will never meet the children that I have or the person that I marry. He'll never get to see the career that I have ahead of me. He'll never get to see any of those things. All because he made that one decision to text while he was driving. And one of the most um, memorable memories that I have of Caleb is when he graduated from high school. And I remember watching him walk across that stage when he got his diploma. And he had this grin on his face like, I can't believe I made it here. I didn't know if I was going to make it, but I did it, you know. He didn't know if he was going to get through it, but he did. And when I graduated high school in 2012, and I walked across that stage with that same grin, I looked up in the stands and my bro brother wasn't there to see me do that like I was to see him. Everything that happens from here on out, my brother's not here for, all because of this one decision. One second took his entire life away. Now, this is a picture of the crash that my brother was in, and the black car, the smaller car, is his car. Um, so this is just a picture of what that one second did for my brother. This is what that one second of looking down, that was his decision. And this is his car. Okay, so I want you guys to do something for me. I want you to imagine the length of a football field, okay? A whole football field. Now, I want you to tell me if any of you in here are comfortable driving that length of a football field blindfolded. Is anybody, anybody comfortable with that? I'm not comfortable with that. Okay, so at the bottom, it's kind of hard to see from you people in the back, but it says that 4.6 seconds of texting while driving, and that's the average time of how long it takes to send, look at, read, type a message, 4.6 seconds of texting while driving is equal to traveling the length of a football field blindfolded. And that's if you're going 55 miles per hour. So if you're on the interstate and you're going 70 miles per hour, it's, it's way longer than a football field. So I just want you to imagine that. Next time you're texting and driving, you think, oh, it's just a second. It's just a second. I'm just looking down for one second to see this. You're traveling a much bigger distance than you think. And imagine what all can happen between you and the cars around you within a football field's length of distance. That's plenty of time to get in a crash, hurt someone, hurt yourself. 
This is a study that I always like to tell people about when I'm talking to them about texting while driving. And this is a study done by Car and Driver, who's a company. Um, and what they did was they wanted to compare texting while driving to drinking and driving. And I think the reason that they did this was because drinking and driving is something that we all know is wrong. It's something that we know is dangerous. We know it has bad consequences. And so they compared it to texting while driving. So the first thing they did was um, they took a baseline study. And what they made the drivers do in this study was they placed a little red light on the hood of the um, car they were driving. And when it was lit, they had to press the brakes. And it kind of signified if the brake lights in front of you became lit, you have to press the brakes to stop so you don't rear in them. And so what they found was when they were impaired by alcohol with a 0.08 um, BAC, which is the legally driving drunk, um, and this is the bottom line, um, they went, and when they were going 35 miles per hour, they went seven feet extra distance travel before they s um, put their foot on the brakes. But when they were texting while driving, they went up to 45 extra feet before they hit the brakes, before they even touched the brakes. Okay? And then when they went 70 miles per hour, which you see to that side, um, it was similar results. When they were, um, when they were driving drunk, they had... Um, went 11 feet extra distance. But when they were texting while driving, they went up to 70 feet before they even hit the brakes of the car. So this just puts it into perspective of something that we all know is a bad decision to make, something that we all know is a bad idea, and comparing it to texting while driving, which seemingly is worse, if not just as bad. Um, so obviously it's a decision that we should all know is a bad decision. Um, this is another thing that I like to share with everyone. Um, this is about distracted driving in general, which is something that we all deal with these days. Um, and there's three types of distracted driving. There's a cognitive distraction, which is taking your mind off of the road, so you're not thinking 100% about what's in front of you. There's a visual distraction, taking your eyes off the road, and a manual distraction, taking your hands off the wheel. Um, and so these are the three types of distracted driving. And all distracted driving is a combination of these. You know, d certain distractions can be one or the other, Certain distractions can be two, but texting while driving is the worst type of distracted driving because it is all three of these. You're not looking at the road, you're not thinking about what's in front of you, and you're not putting your hands on the wheel. So this is why texting while driving is so deadly and it has such bad consequences because it's the worst type of distracted driving you can do. It takes all three of the things that you need to be driving and pulls them away from what you're supposed to be doing. And this slide is probably the most important slide I'm going to share with you all today because, um, like Doug said, I speak to lots of high school and college-aged kids, but I don't get to speak to adults as often. And so this slide tells about if it's teens doing the most texting while driving or adults doing the most texting while driving. And surprisingly, 43% of teens admit to texting while driving, but 49% of adults so there's more adults, a more percentage of adults texting while driving than teens. And this is really important because you all, as much as teenagers like to think that they don't take cues from their parents or their grandparents or people that are older than them, they have that mindset that they don't need to listen to them, they watch what you do. And they watch what you do and they see it and they think it's okay. So if you, anyone in this room, is texting while they're driving, they're giving a, a teenager, a younger person, the cue that it's okay to do that, that it's a safe decision and that they should do it as well. So whenever you're in the car, if you, know, you can't find any other reason to stop texting while driving, look at it this way. Would you want your child, your grandchild, someone younger than you to lose their life because they saw you texting while driving and thought it was a smart decision and so they decided to do it as well? Because at the bottom of this slide, it says 98% of these percentages up top say that they know it's an unsafe decision. So most people know that it's not safe that they're doing it, but they, they do it anyway because it's just one second. It won't happen to me, that kind of thing. But let me tell you, even though 98% of people think that it's, they know it's unsafe, but they decide to do it anyway because it won't happen to them, my brother was just like so many people that I've seen. He was just like any of us. He was a normal person. No one told me and my family when he was born that he was going to die of a young age, no, at a young age. No one told us that. We didn't have any warning signs. Nothing told us. It just happened. You never get a warning. So there's no reason to say that it won't happen to you, that you're you know, somehow exempt from this. It can happen to you just as quickly as it happened to my brother. So 
I want you guys to keep that in mind and keep in mind that you are a role model and peop younger people are watching, taking cues from you, watching what you're doing while you're driving. So if we want the road to be safe for us and for our families, we have to give them the right cues. We have to make sure they know the right decisions to make while they're driving. And the easiest way to do that is just to show them how to drive safely. So um, something that I did right after my brother died, my brother died in December, December 16th of 2009. So the next year in February, um, there was a, a bill introduced in the General Assembly of Georgia. And um, there are actually two bills. There's one in the Senate and one in the House of Representatives. And both of them wanted to outlaw texting while driving. And so one of them was proposed to be called Caleb's Law in memory of my brother. So if this law passed, it would say that texting while driving was illegal for drivers of all ages. Um, and so I found it very important, and people from my high school found it very important, to help get this law passed. We knew that we had learned a hard lesson by losing Caleb. We knew that we needed to help other people know this lesson before they lost someone that they loved. And so we decided a great way to do that would be to get a law passed so that people wouldn't be texting while they were driving. And so um, when I was in 10th grade, I was a 15-year-old, I went to the state capitol and spoke to senators and representatives and talked to them about my story, my brother's story, and I told them why it was important to pass this law. And a group of high school students with me um, went and talked to senators and representatives. And this was very, very scary for us because we were, you know, high school kids and we were talking to these big people in, you know, in the, in the state capitol. It was, it was very intimidating. But we went and we got out of our comfort zone and we went for it and we talked to them. And the first vote, the first day we went, um, it was a vote in the Senate. And we talked all day and worked all day trying to find these people and talk to them about it. And at the end of the day, they voted on Caleb's Law, which was the bill version of it. Um, and at, at the end of that vote, um, the votes came back, and we had a unanimous vote for Caleb's Law. And so we felt so accomplished. And that was the first experience we had in the Capitol. That was the first day we were there. And after that, we had to come back for committee meetings, for the, the House of Representatives vote. You know, we, we came back all the time and talked to plenty of people about um, the bill and why we knew it was important. So as we did this, a lot of times people said, you know, it takes a really long time to get a bill passed. It, it takes three years, four years. Don't, you know, you're probably not going to get it done this year. It probably won't happen. It's really hard. You know, you're doing a great job. You should keep trying, but it's, you know, just prepare yourself because it probably won't happen. But all of us knew how important it was, and we knew how important it was to have it passed this year. Because if it had been passed a year before, my brother might still be with us today. So we knew how important it was to get it passed right now. And so we worked tirelessly and effortlessly every single day. We, we were going to the Capitol for every vote on this law. And at the end of the General Assembly, it got passed on to the governor, which at the time was Sonny Perdue. And um, Governor Perdue was also um, a little bit skeptical about the bill. But we went and talked to Governor Perdue as well and sat in his office and waited for him to see us. And we spoke to him. And we convinced him that this was an important bill because a week later, in June of 2010, less than a year after my brother died, Sonny Perdue signed the bill into law and it became illegal to text while you were driving in the state of Georgia, named after my brother, Caleb's Law. And so that was an awesome thing and it made it illegal to text while you're driving for all ages in the state of Georgia, but it also makes it illegal if you're 18 and under to use your phone at all. So um, something I like to show people when I'm doing this is this is a map of the laws in Georgia or in, in the United States. So the green is where all drivers are not allowed to text where they're driving. Blue is where there's partial bans. Usually those are 18 and under um, kind of things. And then there's no bans in three states still. So especially in the summer, this is important because when you're traveling for vacations, almost everywhere you go, it's illegal to text while you're driving. So keep that in mind and keep that in mind um, also that if this many states have a law about this, it's obviously important. If this many states have decided to pass this law and that it's important, then it really is an important issue that we should be focused on. So also after um, we got the law passed, I think uh, me and my family realized that it was also important for us to do the next step of this. We got the law passed. But that doesn't mean that everyone knows about the law. That doesn't mean that everyone knows about the danger. So we took the next step. And the next step was 
educating people. And so we started going to high schools and colleges, and we started going to um, different types of people, conferences and stuff, just to talk to them about our story. We knew that we had something that other people didn't know. And in my mind, I thought of it this way. If someone had told me a story about losing their brother before my brother died, then maybe my brother would still be here today because I would have made sure that he didn't text while he was driving. If someone else had told me this story, maybe, maybe Caleb's life would have been saved. But that didn't happen. No one told me the story. But I'm telling all of you the story, and that means that you guys have a choice now. You all today were presented with this information, and now you have a choice. You can take this information and know how dangerous it is and go on with your day and decide to stop texting while driving. And maybe someone in your family, some, you, you know, someone you love will be saved because of this. And that's kind of why I do it, because no one told me this story, but I'm telling you so that you don't have to lose your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or your, your children or your grandchildren. You need to know this, and this is now your choice of being safe while you're driving or not. So I want you guys to look at my brother. This is my brother Caleb and his huge smile, happy all the time. Um, and I want you... This is someone that I'll never see again in my whole life. This is someone that I'll never be able to talk to or tell about my life or tell about what's happening. I'll never get advice from him again. I want you to put, I want you to imagine the face of someone that you love, that you would hate losing in that spot. And I want you to tell me if you could lose them because of a simple text message, if you could lose them in one second, will you ever text while you're driving again? I want you to make that decision looking at that person. I want, you to, I want you to imagine that person. And whenever your phone rings in the car, whenever your phone, you get a text message in the car, I want you to look down at your phone and I want you to think about that person and think about how easy it would be to lose them if they were texting while driving or if you hit them because you were texting while driving. One thing that I find that's very hard for me to realize is that there's a lot of people who are still texting while driving. And I've decided to never text while I drive again. But someone else who's texting while driving on the road could kill me because they're making a bad decision. So it's not until everyone on the road is not texting while driving anymore that we'll all be safe. So this is my challenge to you. By the end of the day today, I want you to tell three people what you learned today. I want you to tell three people how dangerous it is to text while they're driving. Because I can talk to as many people as I can, but I can't reach everyone. But if everyone helps me, if everyone talks to three people by the end of the day and tells them how important this is, we're getting farther than I could ever get by myself. And that's going to make our road safer. So I really hope that all of this has made a difference for you guys. I hope that um, this story will stick with you and that you will be able to think of someone that you love when you're in the car and you'll be able to make the right decisions for that person and for yourself because you never know whose life you could save. It could even be your own. So thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You are an incredible communicator, and that was quite a message. I, uh, Thank you. I think you're a gifted speaker, and, and uh, my heart goes out to you for what Thank happened. So uh, and I really do think that, that uh, your talk had a huge impact on the people here and when you go and speak elsewhere. Um, we give a uh, speaker's gift to all our speakers. So this is a coffee mug that has our name and then the four-way test on it. Uh, we also make a donation in the name of each uh, speaker to our Polio Plus campaign, which is one of the efforts that, Rodeo, that uh, Rotary has to eradicate polio. So thank you so much thank for coming you. to speak. Thank you so much. I really yes, appreciate it.